What up, Reject Nation? We're gonna watch ourselves the first episode of Moon Knight today. Of course, joined by our great friend, Koi Jandro here, our comic book expert. Easily knows Moon Knight slightly better than John. He's been reading. That's right, He's he's been reading. He's an expert now. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, of course, full length watch alongs we stick it with the time code or over at our Patreon page. We come and super reject today by checking all the content we got to offer over there. Thank you for the support. And if you can't join our Patreon page, the least you can do is leave a like. Leave a like. Uh, subscribe and click the notification bell also to get notified when our reaction for the next episode of Moon Knight is up. Lastly, them handsome devils over at Prepper. You keep the light on for me in the moon of the night. Yep, let's do it. It's gotta be Arthur Harrow, right? Sure looks like Ethan Hawke. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh God. Oof. Yeah. Hey, it's a Disney show. Get that self-flagellation, boy. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. That's how you open a moon night. Oof. Yes, sir. Every kid on their Disney Plus app has got a crazy idea now. <laughs> crazy idea. Ruining the children. Oh man, what a great intro. <laughs> great mirroring and then literally mirroring, that's great. They believed you needed your heart to be judged in the underworld and only the worthiest would be allowed to pass through the field of reeds. And did it suck for you? Getting rejected from the field of reeds? Well, that don't make sense, because I'm not dead. Oh my god, some kind of foreshadowing is happening! <laughs> oh, that accent's gonna be a thing. <laughs> <laughs> They're like figs and dates and... My, my next horse here, but... Baklava. Seven. Tomorrow. Best steak in town. Oh yeah, yeah, right. So, sorry, but... <laughs> Are you asking me out? <laughs> You're funny. That's gonna be an awkward-ass date, Dad. <laughs> Cool. I didn't know you'd taken a crack. She's dating Mark. The banners and the posters of the Ennead. The what? The Ennead. You know, like the super group of Egyptian gods, you know, you got oh, shoe. Stop, please. If this is some weird audition to tour guide here, the answer's still no. I <laughs> know what, what I'm trying. That's actually crushing to hear. Oh, buddy. I swear I'll shove you in a sarcophagus. You can tell the bloody pharaoh in there what's wrong with him and all. Foreshadowing. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like you're from London. Did you take a picture of us? Yeah, sure, sure. Thank you. Yeah, we're going on a date. I didn't even ask her. I don't know how it happened. You think he's friends with all the personalities? Oh, that'd be fun. If I am going to have a girlfriend at some point, obviously can't have ankle restraints from a bed, can I? I mean, you never know. Find yourself someone kinky. Some people are into that sort of thing. Steven? Hello, and welcome to Staying Awake. Let's start with trying to solve a puzzle. Yeah. <laughs> reading can keep your mind alert and focused. Imagine this, being in the story you're reading. This is a Squid Game soundtrack? Sounds a little like, yeah. Solving puzzles is a great way to keep your mind awake. Bored with puzzles? Between God and man. Oh, whoa. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. no. Cool. Oh, my God. Ow. Oh, oh. ow. Whoa. Wow. Go back to sleep, worm. Hello? Oh. You're not supposed to be here. Yep. I completely agree. <laughs> Surrender the body to Mark. Of course. Surrender the body? What body? Uh, the idiot's in control. Whoo! Yes. I, uh... What are you doing? Just <laughs> <laughs> stand there. Run! That's good, though. Keep zigzagging. That's smart. <laughs> I judge you in Amit's name with but a fraction of her power. Ooh. This is the face of a good man. <laughs> There's one out there. Found him. Who would like to go next? Please, Hero. I must know. Oh. I've been good. 
my entire life. I believe you, but the scales see everything. Perhaps it's something that lies ahead. <laughs> oh. oh no. I wish you could live to see the world we make. Lies ahead, she's like 90. <laughs> 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 Whoa. So sucker. Someone killed two of our men. Is he still here? Do I have a meat? Whoa. <laughs> what a great way to identify yeah. someone. Will you return the scarab? You will give him nothing. Hey, you... uh oh. I strongly encourage you to return that. I'm, I'm not. I'm. Fingers froze. Oh, that's so good. It's me every time I hand Don't over my thing. He's being taunted. Oh, that's so good. Hey, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's happening. There we go. Just take it, take it. Take it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Whoa. Oh, what oh, 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 oh. <laughs> He killed them. Oh, he, he murdered. I'm just gonna wanna go, all right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. Don't you dare drop this arrow. All right, all right, all right. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> this is so good. The windy road reflective of his state. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, cool. God. Ooh. That boat's hilt! <laughs> this is so good. <laughs> if you don't get the serum, I'll kill you both. I don't understand what's happening. Truck, stupid. What? Truck. Ooh, no. Nice. Oh. Wow. Final destination. <laughs> oh my god. Did he just throw the gun? <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing! Leave us be, parasite. Ouch. <laughs> oh, whoa! It was all just a dream, guys. That's it. Uh, Show's over. What a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> just go back to the gift shop. I wonder how many footsteps are going to be around the sand. How are we doing, guys? Sleep all right? I wonder what fishies dream about. Oh my god, did he put in the fish tank? Oh, what? his fin's back. What? Fish. <laughs> what the fish? <laughs> Yesterday that fish had one fin, yeah? You would like that one I bought him. Today, what do you see? I see two. Two fins? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> is that clock right? No, that's impossible. I just woke up. Are you mad? The fish is wrong. The time is wrong. You're not quite right. Oh, okay. Fish is going on a date. What the fish? Bring him with you. You want him to show him the world? Fin man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that imagery is going to be fun later. Symbolism. Ah, uh, symbolism. Definitely because yeah. of all the different <laughs> slaps. And the red yeah, yeah. symbolizes the blood. Symbols. Fragmented personalities. <laughs> Each pane of glass represents pain. Anything with multiple dividing lines is all symbolism. <laughs> I think Friday still comes after Thursday, doesn't it? It doesn't change the fact that today is Sunday, which means lose my number. Oh, you still got to see our work. Oh, oh court. Mm. Oh, buddy. I'll, I'll have the best bit of the, uh, the steak. That's the bit that I want. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, it's good to have Oscar Isaac in the MCU. That's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> like, I mean, how lucky are we? <laughs> It's, it's, it's just good. one character or something. Anyway, I'll tell you more about it tomorrow. Love you. Laters, Gators. That's a new quote. Moon Knight t-shirts. Laters, Laters gators. gators. With the Loki Gator. It's an Easter egg reference.
that shot was a metaphor for loneliness. Tisk, tisk. <laughs> Good old razor phone. <laughs> I've been texting and calling you for months. I just found this phone in my flat and I'm just trying to figure out what? whose it is. What is with this accent? Who do you think I am? What do you mean who? What's wrong with you, Mark? <laughs> Why did you call me Mark? No, 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 no. Come on, come on. Layla. <laughs> Still. <laughs> oh God! What's happening? What's happening? What's <laughs> oh yeah. Kill her! <laughs> Don't trust her! Are we back on the fifth floor? Yes, the thief! My friend Claire lives here. She's expecting me! What's going on? Oh, yeah. So, oh, wow. <laughs> huh. It's like a J horror movie. Oh, good call, yeah. Oh no. So you really do work here? Oh, oh, oh. I'd assumed Stephen Grant was an alias. I imagine my surprise to find you here. Excuse me, Ronnie. This man right here, he's been following me. No, I don't know. Where is Amit? They own every in the country. The scarab doesn't belong to me, it belongs to her. Do you know Amit? She knows what we've done and what we will do. Great. Okay, well, books must have left that part out. Oh my god, all the patrons. She would have prevented Hitler and the destruction he wrought. Nero, the Armenian genocide, Pol Pot, but she was betrayed by even her own avatar. Avatars, mm -hmm. blue people. <laughs> avatar. You mean that? Beat us to the joke. Anime. Stephen. <laughs> Do you want to know the truth? There are things that go bump in the night. There's chaos in you. And we got Ethan Hawk in here. They did, like, this is so good. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. I hear you. Can you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> you about to get us an Anubis? Stephen Grant of the gift shop. Give me <laughs> the scarab and you won't be torn apart. <laughs> Oh my god. Whoa. <laughs> I think it's terrifying. You need to give me control. Do you understand what control of what? What are you talking about? That thing's about to break through the door. We're out of time. It's like a Universal Studios ride. It's <laughs> <laughs> great choreography. You're not gonna die. Let me save us. Oh, it's just chills. Just everywhere. So many moments. <laughs> Moon Knight theme song. Yes, look at him. <laughs> Oh! <laughs> You're stuck in here with me! <laughs> beautiful, beautiful work. Hell yeah. Wow! Wow. 
Step out of the way, Hawkeye episode one. We got a new favorite. <laughs> God damn. I'm so glad they saved, like I never knew Oscar Isaac's voice like that. I'm so glad they saved Mark from all the marketing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it, it felt exciting to hear just Oscar Isaac. Yeah. <laughs> He's so good at that He's British so accent. I, good. I'm like, I, it dawned on me, like in the middle, of like I, I, I don't see an accent at all. Like it's that thing where you, you just think that's his voice. You would yeah. assume that is, if this is the first time you're seeing Oscar Isaac, I would go, oh, the American accent's the voice he's putting on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the duality between that, like nasally, it sounds, you know, insecure versus yeah. his commanding Isaac voice as well as the accent. Yeah. You know, sending Easter eggs for court. <laughs> oh yeah, just uh, lots of Easter eggs. Look at all these Easter eggs. Like, like three. You got the. Oh my God, X Machina right, right here. Yeah. It did leave me with a question though. Did did he ask that girl out with an American accent? And then she was like. And then she was just like, whatever. Right. British now. He's got, <laughs> he's got jokes. I I assume everyone thinks he's you know. F Murray F. Abraham. Abraham. Nice. So it was not Sean Connery from Beyond. <laughs> nope, nope. I let's tried to bring him back. I'm a guys. Hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's get one of those AI voices. That always oh, goes. Oh God, well. that is a beautiful closing credits. What a stunning show visually. Like, they're really great at expressive camera work. Even express in, like, yourself. <laughs> Just express yourself. Don't hurt anyone. <laughs> I like. Knew I'd like the show, but I didn't know how hard it would go. Like, you know, everyone's been concerned about Disney to the point where I was like starting to believe them, and that was really violent. Oh, I signed my age restriction, you know, pin and everything. Yeah, they, they mean yeah. business now. <laughs> Here it is. I mean, that that that's Moon Knight. Like, they they accomplished the really pondersome tone when he's piecing together like the the existential dread, but they also the cinematography reads like the comics which have this really uh, I mean, have you read the Greg Smallwood illustrated stuff yet? The, Is that the six issue one? Yeah. No, I, I, I'm gonna get the okay, So the visuals there like remind the me so much right now. Yeah, the Smallwood visuals there yeah. You'll okay. see. Alright. What are you thinking? No, I don't need to talk. Alright. <laughs> I'm good with just sitting and taking it in. Just absorbing, right? I feel like I need to be a goddamn critic on People the internet. People are watching you know us what I mean? to watch us. Watch us. I'm trying to take in the credits. Here we are. That's what I really came to the show for. It's just to see all the jobs they created. That's beautiful work. So you guys are talking, I missed a casting associate in the UK. Thanks, assholes. <sighs> the transport coordinator, though. Transport is important. There should be an Oscar for best transpo. Uh, Easter egg I did notice that wasn't Shh. Oh. credits. Okay. Wow. All right, I'm done with the bit. What are you saying? It's a long bit. Uh, <laughs> real long bit you're pulling for there. Uh, yeah, the key. the Von it wasn't Von Doom on the on the That's the Easter egg. Cupcake truck. You noticed it, was, it was a lack of Easter egg, because everybody's like, it's Von Doom. I don't think it's oh, that Von yeah. Doom on the on the cupcakes. I don't know who actually believed that. A lot of people. But that, you guys are crazy. This is actually the most separated from the MCU out of them all. That's why I don't like. I didn't notice a lot of Easter eggs personally. I didn't feel, and I'm I'm glad because the Eternal scenes where they were like shoehorning in Marvel felt off to the tone of the film. Whereas this actually, I'm just, oh, there's a mental that illness a, thing at the very end. That's, that I like an that. opinion of non praise about. The Eternals? There is the occasional flaw. What? In a very good film. Boy, what are I, you doing? I, you have there, a the occasional uphold. flaw. Occasion will flaw. You like everything. That's not true. Every the Irish single. single <laughs> oh, no. Coming Bring from you, that Bring it back. Bring it back. <laughs> and I cut that out of the actual oh, no. video. Yeah. Oh. And now it's on the record. Oh. <laughs> now well, you know it's a, cut out of this video. Yeah, uh, it's a throwback to a cut joke, and now it's real. Let's talk um, about it. Let's, let's talk, talk about, about it. it. All right. You know, let's, let's do this differently. Okay. <laughs> Go, our new comic book yes. aficionado. Yes, the the one everybody wants to hear from. No, I, I love this. I thought this was really, really terrific. And yeah, I mean, you know, from my extensive knowledge now of the comics, I mean, this does feel very spiritually sound. I mean, yeah, Stephen has been a bit recontextualized, but I like the choice to do that. I think he's a really effective. Yeah, I mean, he's not the billionaire guy, you know, the <laughs> philanthropist playboy or whatever. I like the choice to really bring us into his world as a character 
character who is a bit more nebbishy and down on his luck, and I love the disorientation they throw you for with all these things that are happening. In an episode like this, they have to be economical with that time, and I thought the way that they managed to hop to so many different things utilizing that lapse in consciousness was really smart. All the way through, their camera work was so complimentary and so expressive to the point where, like, all of these are incredibly finely crafted, but this was a show, this episode alone was an episode where I was like, no shot is wasted here. Everything feels like it has a lot of thought put into it. Oscar Isaac, it's it's hard to say enough things about him. And even though we've only had a few glimpses at uh, Arthur Harrow, Ethan Hawke, uh, I, I love his presence as well. And I love that even though he does have a sinister quality about him, there's something that is sinister. very, uh, <laughs> your boy. Uh, <laughs> even though there is a sinister quality about him, something about him that doesn't seem like, you know, he's a mustache twirler, you know? Like, I like his dedication, his devotion to, you know, this, you know, almost prophet-like role that he is playing, you know, in conjunction with the gods, and I just can't wait to see more. Yeah. I loved it. Uh, I, I loved that there was a moment where we all went like Oscar Isaac. Like, there was one like acting choice after another that was so interesting, so captivating, and it's really hard because of the big change they did with Steven. Uh, I think it's smart to have the Batman similarities separate because there's there's enough people talking yeah. about how he's Marvel's Batman, so you get rid of the Playboy first. Uh, so I love that the duality between Mark and Steven is that direction about weakness and strength, and I really enjoyed the disorientation we as an audience experienced having only Steven's perspective. We only got to experience that and then his disorientation of losing time and losing cognizance. So it, it would be his perspective. What I'm curious is, is if we'll get an episode where it's like we're with Mark the whole time or if we're in an episode where we like meet the third identity and we, we lose time or if they played that just for the pilot and now we're going to, or I don't even know if they're considered pilots if you get a season older, but you know what I mean? If we're going to play with uh, different personalities or now that we've already dealt with these two, if it'll be more streamlined, more more a narrative structure. Uh, that being said, I loved Ethan Hawke so much. I think he's so talented, but seeing him in this this darkness, I like that it mirrored the footsteps. Like we we got that opening that was that was you know his his punishing self-flagellation, but we also then saw uh, the the walk of Moon Knight. I do think we're gonna see a lot more similarities in this hero-villain pairing as we meet Mark. Like I think we're gonna see how similar they are, and I really liked that it opened with the villain in this case, and then followed through. Yeah. You know, the filmmakers, they did say, or one of the creators said that this is like Fight Club meets Indiana Jones. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> like, already from the first episode, I could just imagine how much more archaeological, swashbuckling this is all going to feel. Like, this didn't feel like R-rated to me or any story. It doesn't feel like it's R- I don't know. It's just the first episode. But the first episode was more like that dark PG-13 supernatural horror flair that mm. I really love. You, and especially, like, staying within the museum, it is like Indiana Jones. National Treasure, but like better than National Treasure. <laughs> One of those flares that I really liked a lot. Locking it into solely Steven's perspective, A, gives you a character to really endear yourself to. You know, it's like there's aphemisms about him that kind of remind you of a bit like uh, how you get kind of endeared to like Tobey Maguire in the first Spider-Man movie. <laughs> like everyone just seems to pick on this guy when he's yeah. when he's just a, such a softy. He's a little you know? pathetic. A li <laughs> a even chases a bus like Peter. A little pathetic. Yeah, even chases a bus like Peter at the very top of it. Locking it into his perspective allows you to do some very interesting camera choices and editing choices that can be kind of shocking and cool and also that much more immersive and I thought that was one of the most unique things about what they did here was actually having the delays those shifts, those mm. visual motifs without showing you the events when they're without showing you mm. what Mark Spector is doing when he's taking over makes it more immersive to not actually see it which is so unique like you don't Usually to make it immersive, you gotta really envelop yourself in the actual thing that's happening in the present moment. But throwing you into what he's going through really puts you there. It does make me curious like what the overall character arc will be for him because obviously they've established, like I've had that same thought too, I've expressed that quite a few times. The three main personages are like Jake, Steven, and Mark in the comics. Mm -hmm. And we right? haven't met Jake yet. We haven't met Jake. We don't even know if he exists yet uh, within this world or if he'll be introduced. He'll be the post credit scene. <laughs> Very end. Jake, Lockley, do. Get in my cab. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's a weird thing. That's People so that weird. don't know are like, I'm not excited oh, about the that scene. That's <laughs> that's like a weird <laughs> job shift, I guess. Sure. sure. Why not? <laughs> Fired from the museum. He's a cabbie now. This is his arc. The way how the people were like Bruce Wayne and the billionaire Playboy and Batman. This, this is it. This is his arc into becoming a billionaire Playboy. <laughs> By way of cabbie. That's where the money is. Well, I was wondering like what the what the character arc will ultimately be. Will it be one of those things where because it seems like we're gonna have some of that almost Venom and Eddie thing where mm -hmm. he you know he's is interacting with Conchu within his head. Can we talk about how great Conchu looks? Conchu looks. Conchu looks, looks great. That bus scene I think might be my favorite when he's just standing there for a few frames and then mm -hmm. disappears. Just the scope of them, the size, the yeah. ethereal. Like, up close, we'd seen a couple shots, but the, the scope of what they were able to do and making him feel tangible but intangible at the same time. Absolutely. I think what they did with his mu with the music around them, too, and yeah. the music around this whole show, like, they had some needle drops, but then they also had some just original score that had that, like, operatic Egyptian flair yeah. to yeah. it, and sometimes it was very pulsating. The scene work between Arthur Harrow and Stephen Grant is, is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. What excites me most is because when you get two actors like that, they understand the importance of dynamics and the relationship. So when we have Mark Spector interacting with Arthur Harrow, it's going to be like a completely different scene. Yeah. It's going to be like two different actors are interacting with each yeah. other. Right now. And you have that caliber <laughs> actor for that reason, because apparently, you know, they're friends and that's how Ethan Hawke got brought on. So I love the <laughs> idea that they're actually going like, no, no, we want to have this fight, this actor fight. Like we want to yeah. have this tete-a-tete. -tete. Speaking to what you're saying about the arc, I really think it's going to be interesting to see if the show lands with him being able to control his identities more and being him being able to decide which one is serving the best purpose. Because yeah. in the comics, sometimes that's the case. Not always, but I do think it's gonna be interesting if Mark takes over to a level that we see, you know, the badass kind of steering more. It's by gonna the be end. like that scene in the two towers when Gollum is like talking with himself. Yeah. Go away and never return. <laughs> Go away, never return. <laughs> well, Later, Gator. A, yeah, that action scene was really well shot. I think this just strikes a really cool mood and a really good mystery, but while also keeping it refreshing. And what makes Oscar Isaac's performance, I think, so strong, just how much this all weighs on him. Like, mm -hmm. starting it off where he just has no, you guys are using the word disorientation a lot, so I'll use it. You know, everyone uses word. dense for Eternals. Yeah. So that's the new disorientation. word. Disorientation. Disorientation. Disney well, Plus. This, this disorientation. Is, plus. Disorientation Plus. <laughs> Oscar Isaac's performance is just how much that weighs on it. That's why that restaurant scene was so powerful. It was because it wasn't just that, like, oh my God, he's crying. Whoa, good acting, you know? Which is the mark of any good actor. He cries. That's all you got to do. Good acting. Oh, right? yeah. Yelling. That's all you need. <laughs> yeah. A lot of anger and a lot of crying. Yeah. Good acting. It's the way he interacted. Like, he's not receiving at all what the waiter's telling him. Like, he's vegan. They established that. He's giving into the meat, just, like, succumbing to it. Something he's had to, like, kind of discipline himself, I imagine, to resist that. Like, something as, like, little as that. Something so nuanced that to make that choice, but clearly he likes meat, and then he has to, he's going against something that he's had to discipline mm -hmm. himself to go against, because he's just falling apart internally. But he's just asking him all these questions. He's just like, it'd be so polite, so affable. He's just like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, okay, uh-huh, that's good. But you could see him just breaking down while trying to put on a face. Mm -hmm. Ah, powerful stuff. So yeah, I think uh, Oscar Isaac's performance here is just so strong. Like I care so much. I care so much about Stephen Grant. This is the first Marvel show that they've introduced a character, right? Like as your protagonist? Kate okay, Bishop's the closest. But that was still like yeah. the jumping off point was we got Clint Barton here. I think yeah. it's the closest. Like, this is all brand new people. Like, yeah. Everyone here is and brand new. And that's why I was saying I'm glad there's not a lot of Easter eggs and not a lot of references. A lot of I like that we get to live in the supernatural yeah. by itself for a second. I, I'm not looking for stuff. Maybe I shouldn't be, but I'm enjoying like just the experience oh, of it. And also, the, I keep bringing him up, but Greg Smallwood's, uh, his art style has this really beautiful kind of like pencil shading aesthetic to the underneath. And I'm loving how they're using shading. I'm loving how they're using like darkness versus light. I love the little detail of having a light hood, but like the use mm. of lighting is playing into how I visually see the comic books. There's always this very heavy inked book and it makes it obviously the supernatural tone, but it also feels like more of a translation of the comic to the screen than some of the other shows have for me personally. Like some, sometimes the comic, it feels like a Marvel show. Like they're going for a Marvel color palette. This doesn't feel like a Marvel exactly. color palette. It feels like the comic inks are on screen. Yeah, me. yeah, yeah. It's got really expressive light and I love that you name check J-Horror because it definitely has a certain element of that, which is also very inky and a very sort of depth 
Depths of the Shadows kind of genre and to it. We talked about in one of the trailer reactions about how, you know, they're talking about this is going to be a level up in terms of how harsh, you know, a Marvel Disney Plus show can get. And I've never been one to think that they'll go Daredevil Netflix level, but I do appreciate that, like, in that scene where he kills those people, there is blood. And the blood on his hand is very striking. And it made me go, we don't really often see blood of consequence in these things. And, and even that was something that was, like, really striking just from a color and just from a palette sort of standpoint. Well, I think the most survey thing is honestly the opening scene, stepping into a, a sandal full of glasses. <laughs> that was so, <laughs> yeah. like, that's, 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 and that's such a bold way to open any show, much less a Disney yeah. show. Like, any show opening that way is like, what am I watching? What am I investing in? I can just imagine a whole family getting around. We've got the new Marvel hey! show up. Remember Hawkeye? Oh my gosh. Remember, the, remember the Christmas show we just watched? Man, what a delight. Let's put oh. on Moon Knight now. It's spring. I it's love these things. Oh. What is going on in this show? <laughs> kids, kids, don't get any ideas. Look <laughs> away. Look away. From now on. Keep looking away. Keep looking away. <laughs> I also, I think it was really smart to keep all of the marketing largely in the first episode. Like most of the stuff we saw yeah. from the trailers was it here. I know, I've put the whole series together. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, I know what's going on. Yeah, here we go. Happen. That's why you know about the cabbie at the end. It's all about the fish. Right to the podium. <laughs> Damn it, it, the fish has all the answers. The scary Gus. Gus. Underneath <laughs> Gus all along. Yeah. Gus the fish. Is Gus the fish a future head Avenger? That's the question. Definitely. Definitely. Got a, that's the big Easter egg. Guys, the They're Easter egg is starting bust. the Pet Avengers. Right, got you. Coming. It's just all forming. It's you thought when they were going Young Avengers? We'll no, pizza no. dog. We'll get yep. Gus. We'll we got get the, the Flurkin cat. Alligator from Loki. The Loki Gator. Uh, Perfect. Yeah, we got I mean, that's five. That's an Avengers team. Yeah. Do it. Cut the check. I stopped listening. I know. Guys, I felt that. listen, Moon Knight's done. <laughs> we are, One episode event. We are done. Whole show great. Everyone's done, done today. Done. Listen, uh, follow Koi over on his um, TikTok. Oh, fuck, you forgot to tell me that. I got a YouTube and a TikTok. Oh, at the top? Top of the show? I'll just put a little logo on it. You fucking asshole. I'm the worst. It's my fault. Can you yeah, show me you know, one assignment? You just remind so me of how you're talking about I thought my assignment was to know Moon Knight. <laughs> that is the important thing. Yeah, this show doesn't even really need you to know Moon Knight. That's nice, though, right? Oh, like, we didn't talk about that. are unnecessary. How approachable the show is, considering how dense, to use your word, Moon Knight is. Uh, yeah, disorienting. Listen, uh, if you follow us on Patreon, thanks, John, for um, doing it all, man. He's the Moon Knight expert. He's the Moon Knight expert. <laughs> There's probably a split personality of John that just knows every guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's Moon never Knight. here when I freaking meet him. Yeah. <laughs> if I, I would be he's so always upset. Always Stephen Graham. Oh, yeah. I would be so upset to as find out half the personality is like, like I've all God. the answers, <laughs> the complete shadow relief of all the things I struggle with. And just like he's just a, a guy corner. jollily reading like your cutscene oh. is this guy like, oh, that's nice, gone, completely useless. One thing before we go, Arthur Harrow. I like the way they have drawn him as this prophet for people, this uh, savior. It's such a unique way of cleansing the world, of talking about bringing heaven to earth, mm -hmm. of all right, let the God judge whether or not you're a good person or not. Okay, you're bad, we're wiping you off. Mm -hmm. That is fascinating. It's a it's a fresh spin on the environmentalist villain that we see all the time, you know? Right, yeah, right. The, and the like Thanos plan. One like <laughs> Heaven's Gatey sort of cultism too. Yeah, yeah it's a lot of zealous, like, It's much more man. individualized. It's a much more like personal way to kill somebody. Like you're you're seeing, it's almost like the penance there with Ghost Rider. Wasn't he like a Nazi in the comics or something? Yeah, I mean, definitely like that, man. But with Hydra, it doesn't really work as well. But yeah, like definitely in that tonality. Uh, Moon Knight. Pick up a comic today, kids. Yeah! And step on some glass while you're at it. We'll <laughs> see you guys your shoes. soon. But not before we shout out to the patrons! Ronnie the Hottie Thanos. Tintinous. Secret sh shelf. There, there's a secret shelf. Kelly Verrier. I, I couldn't think of anything. That, thank you for being here. Guess who? It's Josh Faru. Bet you never heard of this one. Randy Boom. Film star Damien Chapa Mendoza. Mr. Jimmy Burns. King Alan Ling. Jacob, I want to climb your ladder. Hi, hi, hi. Ted Theodore Logan Burton Guster. Eric Cons 39, dudes. Tootsie Fruitsie Coosie Coosie. Justin Will Smith. <laughs> Uncle Phil Eider. Carlton, there's a bear in the garage. <laughs> Nick X is not a Fresh Prince character.
Long Schlong Juan Longoria. Gail Fergie Ferguson. Jaron Fergie Wanner. Cliff the Big Red Rodriguez. Crispy Thrustin the Bustin. If I were Alex Byer, I'd, I'd learn how to say your name right. Master T the OG. Pseudonymous Entity the OOG. Olivia the Wise Guy. Andy Funk. Enough said. Lorenzo Baxter! I tried doing a Ron Burke, did it pan out. Giftedly differently saying. Levitt Odell. Good he smells. Ralph Lauren American Eagle oh, Polo has a horse insignia. Simply pimply faded. Pimples? Pimp. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for pledging to our Patreon. Your support has gotten us through the best of times. Things were already good, mm. and you just made it even better. So thank you, seriously. Y'all the best receive it. Receive the gratitude. Thank you, say thank you. When I say thank you, you say no thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs>